Hello, hello, hello. How are you guys doing today? No intro, um, because this is a very serious video today that I'm about to make. Um, I'm going to be talking about Todra Call today, and Todra Call is somebody that demands respect from other people. He expects respect from other people, and so because of that, I think um, that this video should be done in a very serious tone, and I should um, probably roll down my t-shirt and not do an intro and not flip a fan because um Todrick Hall wants and, and needs to be taken very seriously you know he, he needs to be taken very seriously and he wants to be taken very seriously and so for those reasons um I'm going to respect Todrick's wishes and give him all the respect he deserves and um and be very serious in this video. You're probably asking yourselves, most of you out there that watch my channel, who's Todrick Hall? And why does he uh, deserve our respect? And the answer to that is, well, um, she don't, she don't. I tried, you know, I tried, I tried so hard. I tried so hard, I did. I tried, Todrick, I know you uh, watch everything that's put out there about you, so you're watching this. How you doing? How you doing? You working on a new show to put up on the YouTube, girl? Uh, so anyway, uh, Todrick, today we're going to talk about you. I tried so hard. I did. I tried to bring some seriousness to this video. Well, mostly because you demand respect, right? You demand respect anywhere you go. You said that on, on your reality show that you, well, you've been on several reality shows because you're, you're a fame chaser, but you said that on your reality show uh, that that friends of WeHo that made like every gay person look really really bad because you guys were all like you know vapid and superficial and just cared about money which apparently you still care about since you're, you're begging for money on the Instagram but we're going to get into that in just a second so for those of you that don't know and yes I did watch that entire show so I can speak to it okay I watched that entire show um, and, uh, it was, it, it, you know, well, we'll get into that in just a second. So, I don't know what I'm going to call this video. I have written down here, I have notes taken, because <laughs> I come prepared, right? And so, unlike, uh, unlike, uh, a Dodger Call, who needs to be taken seriously, he wants to be respected, he wants to be taken seriously, but he obviously doesn't do his research very well. So, um, I've got notes here that I want to get into. Before I get into this, I want to say that I've got about, um, 45 minutes to make this video because it's Cousin Fun Day today. My cousin Caroline is coming to pick me up. So I've only got about 45 minutes to seriously dedicate to Todger Call. But I think I can I think I can make a concise video about Todger Call today. There's, to be honest with you, really not that much to say. Uh, so anyway, um, but I, I really, in, no, in all honesty, I wasn't going to make this video. Um, people were sending me stuff. I, I think I'm going to call this video, like I was getting ready to say that. I think I'm going to call this video something like, Todra Call is broke, begging for money, and defending Colleen Ballinger or something like that because I'm just going to kind of talk about those three things, which is really what's going on right now. And I wasn't going to make this video for several reasons. One being that I've mentioned Todra Call before on this channel and like very few people comment about him when I just even reference him in a video, which means that people on my channel really don't care about Todra Call. Um, that was the first thing. The second thing was that I didn't really see anybody else talking about it. And so I thought, obviously, nobody really cares about this Todrick Hall story, <clears throat> even though I have been tagged about, uh, tagged by Spill Some Tea With Me on Instagram in these different, uh, comments that he was responding to and things he was saying on Instagram and stuff like that. So I was really kind of surprised. I didn't see anybody else making this video, even though I was getting sent it by a f quite a few people, honestly. And so I really just was like, this is not a video that I think that my audience is going to enjoy or be interested in it, you know? But I kind of kept it in the back of my head because I thought this is this is an important video to make, you know? We've talked a lot on this channel, um, and I've referenced other channels that have talked about it as well, about people that... Um, have indirectly defended Colleen Ballinger or um, come out and protected her, so to speak, whatever, by their not unfollowing her, or by their not speaking on it or whatever. And here we have somebody that is coming out directly and saying something about it. And I thought, this is important to talk about it, right? And then Adam McIntyre came out and I saw that he did a video about this. 
I think his video is called something like Tadra Call Defends Colin Ballinger and uh, Comes For Me or something like that. Now, I will tell you, I purposely have not watched Adam McIntyre's video because I wanted to get on here and I wanted to have, I, I often do this when I'm going to cover something that I, like, I feel like my opinion is important. Um, well, I feel like everybody's opinion is important, but I feel like my specific opinion is important to not be swayed one way or another by watching somebody else's video or hearing a lot of what people have to say about it. So I wanted to make sure that I got on here and I did this video um, just sharing with you guys what I have to say without that being swayed by somebody else's opinion or their point of view. So as soon as I get done filming this video, well, as soon as I get done filming this video and go to Cousin Fun Day and I come home, I will be watching Adam McIntyre's video because I am very interested to hear what he has to say about this whole situation. I'm really interested to hear what Adam McIntyre has to say, anything to do about Colleen Ballinger. So the fact that Tadra Call, one of her closest friends, comes out and defends her, um, I really want to hear what Adam McIntyre has to say. And in Tadra Call's comments to people on Instagram, he, he got, I don't know what was going on with, I don't know what's going on with Tadra Call. I don't know what was going on with him that night. I don't know what's going on with him that week. I don't know what's going on with him this month. I don't know what's going on with Tadra Call. But it, it, a lot is going on with Tadra Call. So anyway, for those of you that do not know who Tadra Call is, let's get into this really quick. I'm going to read you a sighting from his Wikipedia page because... It looks to be the best source, honestly. Todger Call is an American singer. Uh, he was born in 1985. Is an American singer, rapper. So that means that next year he will be 40 years old. Yeah, he's 38. So next year he will be 40 years old. He's 39 years old. So Todger Call is an American singer, rapper, choreographer, and YouTuber. He gained national attention on the ninth season of televised singing competition, American Idol. Following this, he amassed a huge following on YouTube with viral skits, including original songs, parodies, and skits. A documentary series about his video-making process titled Todrick aired on MTV in 2015. Starting with season eight, Hall became a recent or a resident choreographer and occasional judge on RuPaul's Drag Race. From 2016 to 2017, Hall starred as Lola in Kinky Boots on Broadway. Later in 2017, he began appearances as Billy Flynn in Chicago on Broadway and the West End. Hall has released four studio albums, including the visual album Straight Outta Oz and Forbidden. In 2020, he released an NP, Quarantine Queen, in response to the COVID-19 pandemic featuring mask, gloves, soap, scrub, and was the international host of Global Pride. Okay? Now, it doesn't say a lot of this on here. I mean, it does when you get in here. It talks about he has auditioned for all these shows. He's been on all these different Broadway shows and things like that. Um, he's also been on Dance Moms exclusively and worked with the kids and choreographed the kids on Dance Moms. He was on there quite a bit. Um, he is close to JoJo Siwa. I think that's important in the context of this story. Um, and he has a huge social media presence. He has also, like, you know, put out all these, you know, albums and things like that. But he, when they talk about these visual albums, what he does is he puts on these huge shows that are all around the albums. About, I think it was about two or three weeks ago, he announced his newest album, which I think is called something like Broadway, and it's like his favorite Broadway hits or, or songs that he's put out through the years and things like that, and he listed on there who was going to be on there, and I think pretty much the world was surprised that he chose to include Colleen Ballinger at that time. I was actually kind of surprised he didn't come out there at that point and say something, and I think this is where the comments are from, are from that post that he put on that um post on Instagram was the, the Colleen, where he, he announced everybody that was going to be on the album, and Colleen was one of the people that was going to be on the album. So, that's kind of the, the rundown history of, um, of Todger Call, just so you know who he is. He was also on this reality show, hold on a second, it was so bad I couldn't remember what it was called, I just looked it up. It was called The Real Friends of WeHo, it's, and it says it's an American reality television series that premiered on January 20th, 2023 on MTV. Now, it's interesting that it's not listed on his Wikipedia, because if you go in here and it says starring, it says Brad Goreski, okay, who's also on RuPaul's Drag Race, who's a judge for RuPaul's Drag Race Canada, and is also a stylist. And then right underneath it, it says Tadra Call. They are the, the top two main stars on the show. And when you go in here, it says the background. A small teaser of the series was released by MTV on January 5th, 2023, showcasing six co-stars living in West Hollywood, California. The series features Brad Goreski, a current judge from Canada's Drag Race, Tadra Call, a choreographer, an internet personality, and goes on to list the other people, okay? And it was basically about five or six gay men that lived in West Hollywood that were allegedly friends, Okay. 
One of the problems with this show when it came out was that it received so much backlash from the gay community. The gay community refused to watch it. One of the reasons why I watched it was because I wanted to cover all the drama that was going to go on because people were refusing to watch it because it had Todrick Hall in it. Okay, that's very important to note. That Todrick Hall was in this reality show. People were like, why do you have to pick five or six uh, super entitled, uh, you know, just you know, vapid gay men from West Hollywood to show a segment of, I mean, do we not have enough of that on television already? You know, could you not pick the five gays of the Midwest, you know? Or, I don't know, how about many different people from the LGBTQIA plus community across America? Why does it have to be five of the most superficial gay men living in West Hollywood that have a lot of money that get a reality show? show. Well, a, there was huge backlash for it. People weren't going to watch the show just because Todrick Hall was on it. That was a huge issue because Todrick Hall has huge allegations of his own. Let's get into these allegations, okay? These are allegations that he has actually denied. But when you go in here to his own Wikipedia, which I will read it from his own Wikipedia, okay? Um, hold on a second. Personal life. It goes on here and says, allegations of professional and sexual misconduct. There are huge articles written about this. This has been covered extensively. The reason I'm reading from this Wikipedia is because it's very short and concise, and I'm not going to read, you know, a 10-paragraph article about it. In 2019, several former dancers and collaborators on Hall's YouTube videos and visual albums accused him of never compensating them for their work, Okay. Hall has denied these allegations. This has come out by many, many people that they said that they were never paid for being dancers on Todrick Hall's shows, being dancers on his YouTube videos, things like that. They said that they were promised that they were going to get paid and they never got paid for it. Further, also in 2019, Hall's former assistant shared documents alleging that Hall was involved in a sexual harassment lawsuit and that he witnessed predatory behavior. The allegations were reiterated in 2022 following Hall's uh, controversial, controversial appearance in Celebrity Big Brother. Okay, so these allegations of not paying dancers and uh, witnessing predatory behavior, all, all these sexual inappropriate allegations continue to follow Todrick Hall, okay? To the point that on the reality show, the friends of WeHo, he did Pride Day in Palm Springs. I'm, to be honest with you, the show was so bad, but I'm kind of glad that I watched it in retrospect so I know this point of view. He was so afraid to go on stage that he was going to get booed off because at that point, every show that he did, he was getting booed off left and right. He was getting booed off stage. People were booing him everywhere. He was talking about the whole show. He talked about canceled culture and that he couldn't, I mean, as he was standing there in Louis Vuitton and Gucci, and he's, now he's crying and begging for money. He was had bought this huge home in West Hollywood that they all came over to. It was this gorgeous home. I mean, you should see Brad Gresky is like going crazy over this home. They put him up for in Palm Springs Pride, they pay him for this for doing this, you know, this gig, and then he gets put up in this hotel room. And even one of the other guys comes over there and he's like, Oh my god, this hotel room that you were given, it was like a four bedroom, it was like this four room hotel room suite in Palm Springs. It was amazing during Pride Day weekend, it probably was a ten thousand dollar suite. And he's gifted all this and he's crying about online cancellation and how mean people are, right? But he's not addressing why he's being canceled online and that the cancellation or why people are get coming for him is because there's all these allegations that he never paid his dancers, which he's never rectified that situation. He just cries the river. And then he also has these allegations of sexual inappropriate behavior, okay? And also watching somebody else being predatory and all this, or witnessing people being predatory. So there's that. So now he comes out and... He is so broke that he's begging for money on Instagram, okay? Begging for money. I'm going to prove it to you in a second. While he's moving to London, okay, he doesn't have any money. And he explains on here why he doesn't have any money. Well, I don't understand why he doesn't have any money, okay? You've gone on tour. You released all these albums, okay? You're being paid to do Pride Day performances. You're being paid for reality shows. You should have saved a little bit of money. If it were me and I got down to my last $10,000, I might think, maybe, girl, I don't need that pair of Gucci shoes, okay? Maybe I don't need to go to this fancy dinner with my gays a wee ho, you know? Maybe I don't need to fly to London this weekend. Maybe what I need to do is take my last $10,000 and find a studio apartment somewhere maybe outside of West Hollywood and, I don't know, go figure it out for a while and save some of my money and maybe get a, and get a, get a job, okay? if this ain't paying the bills anymore because you've aligned yourself with the wrong people. Now, Adam McIntyre, who you so uh, delicately came for, 
in your comment sections and said, yes, I watched his videos, which we're going to get to in just a second. Adam McIntyre right now is living his good life up in Paris, okay? He ain't worried for money, and he ain't begging for money, and he is staying at one of the nicest hotels in Paris, having dinners with his good Judys and hanging out all over town, because I just seen it over on his Instagram, and happy for him, too. And he ain't begging for money to be on that trip, Todrick. So maybe the truth is that you're standing on the wrong side of the story by defending Colin Ballinger. I'm just saying, okay? Adam McIntyre don't seem to be hurting for it, but you do, okay? Maybe it's because you're aligning yourself with the wrong people, or maybe it's actually that your behavior is similar in some ways to Colin Ballinger, which is why it's so easy for you to defend it. Maybe it's not just that you're a friend of Colin Ballinger's, maybe it's that you're also similar in how she acts, but we'll get to that in just a second. Okay, my cousin just texted me, and she said 2.15. She's now going to come 15 minutes early, okay? I'm going to have to text her and be like, I'm filming a video right now, girl, because I'm really getting heated. You're going to have to give me five minutes. Okay. She wants to come uh, early while I'm getting in the heat of the, this video. We might be able to be done by then. Okay. So let's get to the next part of my notes. Got the allegations out of the way. Got his bio away. Okay. This is my thing is when I'm watching all this stuff go down and I'm watching him come out. Okay. And he comes out with this seven page Instagram story. Right. And I only caught like the very beginning of it. I was sent. And I'm going to read it to you in just a second. He's like, oh, cry me a river about this and cry me a river about that. And I need money because I'm moving to London. Girl, just don't move to London then. Don't move to London, okay? You know, this is where it's like, and they're like, oh, no, but I got a show I have to do in London. Or I have this, I have this. Well, if you don't have money to move to London, you don't move to London, you know? I can guarantee you right now, okay? There's probably somebody named Sheila right now that's working a day shift up at the Hardee's or the Carl's Jr. in Oklahoma City. And tonight... After she puts her babies to bed and does homework and makes uh, meatloafs and, and sloppy joes for dinner, okay? And she might have her one good natural light beer to go under her second job, okay, of waitressing at some restaurant while her mother comes over and babysits the kids so she can have two jobs. I bet you she wants to move to London too, but she don't have the money and she ain't begging for it online because even if she did, nobody would give it to her, okay? So cry me a fucking river that you have to move to London and you're begging to do cameos. We're going to get to that cameo situation in just a second, okay? So maybe what you need to do is you need to prioritize your life. Maybe art's not working for you anymore, you know? I talk a lot over here about starving artists. Some artists that aren't even well known until after they've passed away, okay? A lot of people that are starving artists that are trying to get jobs on uh, Broadway aren't gifted those positions because they were on reality shows or got famous on YouTube. Many of those people who are better trained than you are, Todrick Hall, okay, have worked their ass off for years and years and years. And I watched that show and he's like, every, I put every bit of money into my own shows and blah, blah, blah. You obviously do and you obviously don't save enough to pay your dancers. Just saying, okay? If enough people are coming, if one person came out and said I was a dancer and I didn't get paid, I'd understand that. If two people came out, I might side-eye it. Three or four people, you're talking about a lot of dancers that are coming out that said that they were promised to be paid by Todd Call. You cannot do that, okay? You cannot do that. That's not just about your reputation. That's about, I don't know why anybody ever works for Todd Call again, you know? So I, that doesn't make any sense to me whatsoever. And, and so, well... Okay, we'll, just, we'll save that till later in the video. But one of the things that I'm confused about is... Why don't any of these people have PR people? Like, I can't, like, I, for years, I have questioned this, okay? I remember asking James Charles that. I remember asking Jeffree Star that. I asked Shane Dawson that. I asked Trisha Paytas that. I asked all these people. I was like, why do you not have a PR person, okay? I'm starting to think these people don't make the kind of money that they act like they make. Except they spend, the, they spend their money to make it look like they make that kind of money. So I don't know, okay? But it's interesting to me because they don't, any of them have PR people. Now, what PR person? in the world, okay, would tell you, he's, he has gone off on the Twitter before about these allegations, and, and he just really attacks people is what he does, okay, and now he's coming out, and first he thought it was a good idea to include Colleen Ballinger, the most canceled person in 2023, he thought it was a good idea to put her on his album, because she's one of his friends and he'll always defend her, but we'll get to that in just a second, okay, then people question that, which they have a right to do that, okay? You know, if tomorrow somebody was doing a movie and Kevin Spacey was in that movie, you think people aren't able to ask the director or the producer of that movie, why the fuck are you including Kevin Spacey, you know, in that? 
People have a right to ask anybody, whoever they put in a, in a show or a TV show or a movie or whatever, okay? Or an album. So, Colleen Ballinger has some very serious allegations. I know they're not serious to you, Todrick, because you have similar allegations. So, maybe they're not that serious to you. Maybe everybody in Hollywood does this kind of bullshit, okay? But the rest of the world doesn't. And that's why they take issue with it, all right? And I think the saddest thing to me is that, you know, for years... I liked Tadra Hall. I found him long before he was ever on Dance Moms, okay? But I do remember when he was on Dance Moms, and he came in there very entitled, and he wasn't very nice to the girls, if you remember, if you go back and watch. And in fact, I do believe that there was a party that he had with Colin Ballinger where he included some of the girls, but not all of the girls, okay, to come to the party. So he, as a grown adult, was picking favorites, even back in the day, on Dance Moms with young ladies, okay? Young children. So that's who Tadra Hall is a person. He has never come across to me in any interview, in any reality show, on any RuPaul's Drag Race, of which I've watched every appearance he's ever done. I have watched this man for years. He has never come across to me as somebody that is real likable or knows how to present well in an interview or in front of a camera as a likable person. He comes across as arrogant and entitled is who he comes across as, okay? Artistically, I liked him. I thought for a long time, I thought, this guy, he really has an eye artistically. It is so sad to me that he has sold it all out, okay? And that is really what has happened here. But it's interesting to me that these people, none of them have PR people. Because if they did, a PR person would say, first of all, don't be sharing your business all over in, in notes apps, okay? On the Instagram, talking about how poor you are, then begging for money in cameos, then coming out in comment sections and attacking your audience over your defense of Colleen Ballinger, okay? No PR person in the world will tell you how to handle that. I don't even have a... People tell me all the time, you, people need to hire you as your PR person. I wish they'd call me up and ask me. Trust me, I might give up YouTube if enough people started asking me, okay? Because they ain't doing the things that they need to do. They, don't, they aren't doing it the right way whatsoever. So let's get into what happened, okay? So he puts this album out, right? And on, on his Instagram, here, let me pull up his Instagram really quick and see if, it, if, uh, if he's still got a little Thumbelina of a squirrel. I love her so much. Okay, so he puts this album thing out. Here it is, Tadra Call. Why isn't it loading me? Of course. Okay, here it is. So he puts out here, Meet the Voices, okay? Uh, meet the Voices of Todger Call Musicals. And he put on here, I was 16 years old when I started writing musicals. I can't believe I'm typing these iconic names, but thank you. And he thanks all these people, okay? And he's got on here, I mean, a lot of really, you know, famous people. Uh, Cynthia Rivo and uh, Cheyenne Jackson and Jordan Sparks from American Idol. I mean, uh, Nicole Scherzinger from uh, the Pussycat Dolls. I mean, he's got a lot of people on here. And Billy Porter and on and on and on. Wasn't Billy Porter, wasn't there something? I like Billy Porter, but I feel like there's something problematic about him, too. Where's Colleen Ballinger? Uh, Kristen Chenoweth. Um, oh, here it is. Colleen Ballinger. He's got her right here at the top here, okay? And people did not like that, right? That, um, you know, here it is. And, uh, and he's done some really important things. Todd Call launches first black-owned theatrical performance rights company, releases recordings um, from first three musicals. That's something that he's done. I don't really understand. It goes in here and talks about Cynthia Erivo, uh, Kristen Chenoweth, Billy Porter, more singing new uh, recordings of Todd Call musicals. So, he puts out here, this was from Playbill. I mean, he's getting a lot of attention over this album that he's releasing. So I'm very clueless as to why he is so broke. But one of the things that he does come out and say, which is very, very sad, is that he had a family, his family's a home burned down. And he actually on his Instagram has a GoFundMe. And um, on here and ex explains he's trying to raise $10,000. As of right now, he has $8,803 raised. And um, it says, thank you so much for the love and support, your kindness and messages. A few weeks ago, I got a FaceTime call from my little brother. I almost didn't answer because I was at a work meeting. And it goes on to talk about um, answers to call, the call of him screaming and freaking out that the house was burning down. He was alone. His mom was visiting him in L.A. He goes on and talks about the house burning down. And so that's why he's right, raising the fund raiser. And he's talking about not having money right now because of, of him trying to help his family. That is incredibly sad, Okay. But I think to lead with that would have probably, um, in the fundraiser and the GoFundMe and things like that, would have maybe been a better way than coming out. And he does this seven-page Instagram story, okay? Now, 
when I tell you that Todrick Hall has a way of being and kind of across as entitled and arrogant, this seven page uh, Instagram story came across, I think many people felt entitled and to me it really, to be honest with you, wasn't any more than I had ever seen from him before, but a lot of people apparently were coming back at him because he took it down and he reset it. So this is what I originally said. Dear fans, from, uh, friends, and family, this is someone embarrassing and extremely humbling to come to you all about, but I feel like I have been sharing my life, the ups and downs with you all for the past 15 years. You all know that I have been battling with cancel culture and allegations on the internet for the last few, few years. So this is, again, him crying a river about these allegations, okay? That is hard enough to go through, but it's even harder to deal with the real life effects of the internet that have affected me mentally, emotionally, but also financially. He goes in to talk about all this kind of stuff. Then he deletes this, okay? And he posts this one thing, and this is what he says. I just posted a long seven-page post that clearly upset some people who didn't read it all the way through to the end. So let me state this quickly. Okay, do you hear the arrogance, the condescension, and the patronizing tone in that? Okay. If you didn't, let me hear it. Let me read it for you again. Now, he's asking people for help, okay? And this is how he's speaking to them. I just posted a long seven-page post that clearly upset people who didn't read it all the way through to the end. So let me state this quickly. I don't expect for people to understand when celebs have problems, but we are all just humans that fall on hard times like everyone else. I'm not asking for sympathy or a handout, just simply stating that I need to pay some bills while moving to London. My family's home just burned down and life is just lifing. So rather than ask for a handout, I'm discounting my cameos from now until my birthday. They are $5. If you, um, if you like it, you can leave a tip. If you don't want a cameo, I have autographed vinyls and merch on my site. I didn't mean to be toned up, but this is my reality and how I make money. I apologize if it offended anyone. That was not my intention. Love you all, and thanks for the love. Well, I don't think there's anything wrong with him asking money for his family whose house burned down. I feel horrible for his family for that, right? I feel horrible for him. I mean, you can dislike somebody's behavior and not wish the world of harm on them. I feel horrible for him and his family for that. But he's got a GoFundMe up there, right? So is it cancel culture? I mean, you just released an album. Are you not making any money off that album? I'm confused. I'm confused as to why you don't have any money. And now you're alleging that it's about cancel culture and this other thing, which is probably why people were saying that it was tone deaf, because you're being canceled for not paying your dancers, allegedly, which you've come out and denied, but now you're saying that you need money from people because you can't move to London. <laughs> I know people that have never left the city that they grew up in, okay? So I'm sorry that you can't move to London, and I don't know what you're moving to London for, a show or whatever, but maybe you need to take a year or two off and maybe prioritize your life and just stay in, in the city that you're at, and like I said, get some small apartment, just save your money. We've all had to do it before. I talked extensively on my vlog channel about having to pay off major debt before. And I can tell you I wasn't moving around the world and doing this and, and, and doing this show and doing that and whatever. No, I was saving money, paying off debt, snowballing it like D Dave Ramsey says. Um, so, you know, I mean, I feel bad for your plight. Uh, the other thing I do want to say in here really quick, hold on just a second, in referencing his cameos, is that it says on here that he was going to leave it at $5 until... Um, his birthday, which his birthday is April 4th. Today is the 3rd. I just went and looked on his cameos, and you can go do this too today when you see it, but his cameos are listed at $50, and it's the 3rd. So he lied. So he came out and begged for money and asked for $5 cameos, which then he posted all over his Instagram stories how many $5 cameos he was getting, okay? And now it's the 3rd. He said in that post that I read you that he was going to leave it up until his birthday, but I'm looking at it right now, and it says Todd Call right here, and you can see when you go up here, it says book a, book a personal video for $50. $50 for a cameo on his, a day before his, his fourth, he turns uh, 40 years old. So now that's a lie. You lied, okay? So when you come out and you say that there's nothing true to these allegations, I've just proved that there's an allegation against you that's true. You came out and were begging for money, telling people that you were going to leave your cameos at $5 till your birthday. I don't know if you've come out and addressed it, but it doesn't really matter if you have. Now, I will tell you what's interesting about this is somebody that does cameos, and I get regular requests for cameos, okay? When you do a cameo, the price that it's booked for is not what you get paid for. So if he's doing a cameo for $5, he's probably getting paid on that $5 cameo. Depending on if you book it through the website or the app, because you get paid separate prices for that, 
He's probably making anywhere from $1.99 to $2.99 off of each of those $5 cameos, okay? So if that's what he's getting paid on those, if he's doing 100 cameos to make $300, how desperate for money is he? Or is he trying to deflect the attention off of the fact that he is siding with Colleen Ballinger? Now it's making me wonder if his begging for money is not a deflection tactic off of him defending Colleen Ballinger because he's already raised the prices back up to the cameos and he is back at $50, okay? Where am I at on time? Is this about to stop? I feel like it's about to stop. Hold on. Oh, it's about to stop. It stopped before I even got up there. So I'm kind of wondering if it's not a deflection tactic, if you want to know the truth, okay? Um, because for me to sit down and do 100 cameos, now for you, just so you know, okay? I do like four, minimum three to four minute cameos, okay? So let's just say if he's even just getting on there and he's doing a one minute cameo, okay? That's almost two hours of time for three less than $300. It's almost not even worth it for him. Also, can you imagine just back to back to back. I mean, you have to also upload them. So it takes time to upload a cameo. If anybody out there has done cameo, you know what I'm talking about. So you also have to upload them, which takes time, okay? So let's just give it two minutes. So now he's doing 100 cameos, okay? Let's just say he got a minimum. I think he got more than that, but let's just say he got a minimum of 100 cameos, okay? So that's an hour and 40 minutes, double that, okay? That's three hours that he's doing, for getting paid $300 when he's doing a Pride Day festival, getting paid five, ten thousand $10,000 plus put up in a suite for the weekend. I'm not buying that this is for the money. Do I think that he's struggling with money? Yes, I absolutely do. Do I think he's making more money off of $50 a cameo than he's making off of $5 a cameo and he moved it back up there very, very quickly? A hundred percent. And let me just tell you, as somebody that books my cameos for $30 a cameo, cameo, even though cameo takes a great part of it for you get to use the app for free and all that kind of stuff, they do everything else. It's very lucrative if people are booking them regularly. So somebody like Tadra Call, that's probably getting it a lot. He's pro a lot of people are going to cameo right now. The housewives, a lot of people are doing cameos. And so he's probably seeing that. And I have to believe that this is his way. He was going to do it and then move it right back up. I don't know when he moved it up. Today was the first day that I looked, you know, but he didn't keep it up at whatever he said he was going to do. You know, has he announced it on here? Let's go in here and see. Did he announce on his, uh, his Instagram story? Let's see. The applause from the peanut gallery. Okay, he's got that up here. Oh, he, he's oh, he, oh, he's so broke. He's filming uh, TikTok and Instagram reels. Oh, okay, I got you, girl. Okay, so let's get into the meat and potato. What did my cousin say? She said, okay. So anyway, she'll just sit in the driveway and do some work, or she'll drive around and get her a coffee or something like that. So let's get to the next part of this. Okay, so that's why I'm not understanding is where the money's going. Then here's some tea with me. Um, uh, tagged me and other people in this. Where is it at? Okay, in these uh, comments that he came up with that he was responding, here they are, that he was responding to people on Instagram, okay, about Colleen Ballinger. And I'm just going to read the comments in order. I don't have the reference because they just posted them in the reference points to the comments. So I don't have the original comment. But these are, this is what he says. Are you ready? Now, I have to tell you, I started reading this. I got about three sentences in and I thought, nope, I'm going to wait until we are on camera. I am going to read this live on camera and I am going to respond to this live because he is literally the first person that has come out besides Jojo Siwa. And we saw how well that went for her. Have y'all seen this new look of Jojo Siwa's? She's bad. Oh my God. She's so bad. She looks like a Power Ranger. Girl, what is so bad about that? You look like you're in a fucking costume from the Ice Capades, okay? You want to be so edgy and adult? Quit selling those fucking ridiculous bows, okay? And I don't know. Quit wearing costumes that make you look like you're on the Ice Capades, okay? It looks like Disney on ice. You don't look edgy. You look like a joke, all right? I think JoJo Siwa is a joke. And all these people that are like, oh, JoJo Siwa is old enough that blah, 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 or JoJo Siwa, she's a child, and she's been this, and she's been that, and she's part of the Colin Ballinger. She's defending Colin Ballinger right now. And don't forget that JoJo Siwa is older than James Charles was when he was doing that shit to those minors, okay? So J James Charles can be held accountable for that. JoJo Siwa can be held accountable for her. And I understand, listen, okay? If years from now she comes out and she says, I did not realize that I was being groomed by these people, I will feel devastated for JoJo Siwa.
But I'm going to be honest with you. I don't think that's going to be the case with JoJo Siwa. I just don't. I don't think she's going to ever come out and say that. But she come out with this new album. And now she's bad, girl. She bad. She got a bow in her hair no more, girl. She bad. She bad. She had that thing on. I thought, what is she? What in the fucking Power Rangers holy ice capades hell is this? She's walking down this runway in this outfit. It looks, I, I was like, girl, are you trying to be an alien reptilian from the United States on the ice capades? I am so confused what this look is. Someone told her that they thought this was bad. She bad, girl. She wants to be a pussycat doll. Don't you wish your girlfriend looked hot like me? No, I don't, girl. I don't hope I never look nothing like that. I don't think you look bad as in the way you think you look bad. I think you look bad as in worse dress list, okay? And I'm just telling you that, girl, okay? She's like so edgy, okay? How can you be so edgy? You can take that bow off. You can cut that hair. You can put you in the baddest ice capades outfit in the entire world, okay? But girl, and you got a pretty smile. You really do, okay? But you ain't bad and looking no evil and sultry with that. That smile, that, that Abby Lee Miller smile that you can't get rid of, okay? It's like girls that did pageants in sixth grade. And they still do that to this day. Girl, you can't lose that, okay? There ain't bad bone in your body. There aren't. Except for that you defended Colleen Ballinger and told the entire world, when you take a lie and you run with it. Well, your good Judy Todra Call is now falling in line with that. He's using that as well. So let's hear what Todra Call has to say. So this person says something to him about Colleen, and he says, I love her. <laughs> I love her. I love her so much. She's so good to me. He says, I love her. Sue me. Well, you might get sued, girl, if you find, if Trisha Paytas finds out you were at those parties, okay? I'm just saying. We're, we can't narrow down who was at those viewing parties, but now you're truly coming out in defense of your good Judy Colleen Ballinger and how much you love her and you've been around her through the years. It might be that you were at those OnlyFans viewing parties. So you might end up getting your wish. You might get sued, girl, for loving Colleen Ballinger. I'm just saying, okay? Um, but getting sued for being part of that. I love her, he says. Sue me. I don't agree with everything she's done. Can you be specific about what she's done? But I can't say that about anyone. I am no longer interested in posting based on who's not canceled this week. I have known this woman for 15 years and friendship is sticking with people you love through thick and thin. Um, you know, friendship is telling people what they need to hear, not what they want to hear. And I've said that in many, many videos of mine. There have been times in my life that I have so royally fucked up that even my best friend has said to me, um, yeah, you need to clean this up. You need to take accountability for this. Now, the way that I know when I've really fucked up from when I haven't fucked up and when I need to take accountability is when I go to my best friend, Tanya Jean, who's actually known me for 25 years, not 15 like you and Colleen. When sh I go to her because... On the times that I do royally fuck up and I do need to take accountability, she'll say to me, you fucked up, you need to take accountability. That's how I know on the times that I go to her and she says, no, I don't think you have a part in this, right? That I know that I don't have a part in it, right? But when you're a kiss ass to your friends and you tell them that they don't do anything wrong, like what you're saying here, no, that's not being a good friend. A good friend is telling somebody what they need to hear, not what they want to hear. A good friend would be somebody that said to Colleen Ballinger, Colleen, you done fucked up. You need to get online and you need to own it, okay? And if, and, Todrick, in your words, you need to say to Colleen, hey, Colleen, you and I have both worked around a lot of young people for a long time, and we have been impressionable to young people, and for that alone, you probably need to come out and own it and take responsibility, even if it's the thing that ruins your career, to clear your conscience and allow these victims to move on and have some grace in their life, okay? Todra Call, who wants to come across and talk about being a spiritual person, um, you probably would want to allow these young impressionable people that you and Colleen have worked with and used to gain your audience for years on RuPaul's Drag Race, on Dance Moms, in your videos, JoJo Siwa, on and on and on. Those people that you've stood on their shoulders of those very young impressionable people, you would probably want your friend to come out for those things that she's done that you don't condone. And you would probably want her to own that to give them some grace, right? So they can move on from their life. Is that what you're talking about, about being a good friend? Because I don't hear that in here at all. But let's go on. I, 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 I uh, digress. I am no longer interested in posting based on who's not canceled this week. I have known this woman for 15 years and friendship is sticking with people you love through thick and thin. Um, 
Yeah, I have about five, ten years ago started getting rid of toxic negative people in my life that brought me no joy and I couldn't stand behind besides the things that they were doing that were problematic. That's called removing toxicity from your life. It's actually very healthy and you should try it. I don't know how you would do that because you'd have to probably go to therapy to get rid of your own toxicity. But I had to do that. I had to work on my own toxicity and my own negativity because I found that I was very negative and very toxic as well. So sometimes that's something you have to do. Just a suggestion. You guys keep typing groomer in all caps when you know that that implies something sexual and people read it. Yeah, she was having actually sexually inappropriate conversations with minors, asking them their fa favorite sexual position and things like that. Do you not, that's, if you look at the definition of grooming by the Rain Foundation, which is actually the same foundation that, uh, um, that Andrew Quintana that interviewed your good Judy Colleen Ballinger for Vanity Fair. It was the same organization that he used to use their definition. Their definition of grooming is actually those kind of interactions. That's an international organization. Since you're in London, you might know what international means. Um, and this is called Shade, okay? And since you want to talk about shady boots and all that kind of stuff, this is what you're getting today. Um... You guys keep typing groomer in all caps when you know that it implies something sexual and people read it, but I think that word is being used to make one thing in her life. So I'll put a sentence in caps. No one should be defined as a human by only their worst moments. No one would want to be lived up to that standards. No one. Yeah, I absolutely 100% agree with that. I don't think that anybody should be held to the accountability of just one action in times of theirs, let alone three months that they were called out on and then they continued to be in those same group chats and many others after they got called out on have never taken accountability and have never even owned up to those things actually got on video with a ukulele and sang a song making a joke of it making a joke of their victims okay so no i don't believe that somebody should be held accountable for one moment of time if they ask for forgiveness and they actually own own up to it and take accountability for it. Yes, I think that we should definitely allow those pers those people grace and the ability to move on from it. I don't want to be held to the sins of my past 10, 20, 30 years ago, and nor do I want to hold somebody else to those, same pa those sins if they address it and come out and try to rectify the situation. The problem is that she hasn't, okay? And we know that about Colleen Ballinger. He says, I love her, always will. Nothing personal towards you, but if people don't like that, they can unfollow. Sorry, not sorry. I don't know that while you're begging for money that I'd be telling people to unfollow you. Another PR move that you might want to hire a PR person for. But just saying, sorry, not going to pretend on social media. I truly feel for the people affected by the situation. Do you, though? Do you? Because you're defending Colleen Ballinger over the victims, see? You're minimizing the word grooming when that's exactly what she did, as defined by the Rain Institution, which is what Andrew Quintana used to defend her. It's actually the same definition that she used by major organizations that do that. They, they, they are the ones that are defining those terms. But you're smarter than that, right? You're smarter than that, Mr. King of Boots, aren't you? You're smarter than that. You know more than the organizations that work to defend those victims, but you care about those victims, which is why you're minimizing what they have to say, and you're coming out and you're defending the, that person. Okay, gotcha. Trust me, it's in moments like these when you need friends the most. She's already lost so much. She's a human being. How long should she be in timeout before she's allowed redemption? First of all, Colleen Ballinger's not in timeout when you post this. She is posting vlogs regularly. She has not lost her house, okay? She has not lost her million-dollar fortune. She still has her husband. She still has many friends that have never spoken out about her. In fact, she has many friends like Joey Graceffa that simply unfollowed her on social media that she probably still talks to on a regular basis. I think Colleen Ballinger is doing just fine with friends, okay? I think we know that. Colleen Ballinger is posting videos she's making money. In fact, Colleen Ballinger never lost any money at the time of the allegations because her videos were being viewed at a massive time high. She just wasn't posting videos. But she had just come off a tour where she was making a lot of money, okay? Let's not forget that lie that Colleen Ballinger said that she wasn't making any money during that time. Her videos have never been demonetized off of YouTube, okay? So I'm not really sure what this time out is she's referred to. Are you talking about that people... Like Winona, finally, I saw the light in your window last night. People finally saw the light with Colleen Ballinger, and so they chose to unfollow her. That's not called cancel culture. What that's called is seeing the fucking truth about somebody and saying that my integrity doesn't align with theirs, my principles don't align with theirs, and therefore I can no longer endorse and support them because I don't have the same principles as them. What you're saying in this is actually not that you're a loyal friend. What it's saying is that your principles and your integrity directly aligns with Colleen Ballinger and that you're basically co-signing her behaviors. You have no problem with that. But let's get on to your next comment, shall we? Okay. The next comment says, and asking about Adam McIntyre's videos, 
We watched his video. Still enough, uh, still not enough of a reason to disown my friend and not love her. Adam McIntyre's extensive videos of responding to each and every single tweet, right? Okay. What about Becky and what she had to say about the live show? Uh, you know, what about Oliver? What about all the other people that have come out and talked about not only Colleen Ballinger, but the Ballinger family? Can we talk about Trent Ballinger for a second? What do you have to say about Mr. Trent Ballinger? She a good duty of yours, too. You were loyal to the, you know. There are a lot of people that have been hurt by this entire family, okay? To me, I don't think the Ballingers are a far cry from the Duggars, if you want to know the truth, okay? It's just a kind of different kind of religious family cult to me, if you want to know the truth, okay? But are they following a certain doctrine and religion? Absolutely, when you follow it, okay? And it's weirdly, is what it is. So, you don't have a problem with that. Adam McIntyre has come out and talked about this in so many videos that he has acquired his own entire hate group off of him coming out and talking about these allegations. He's gotten death threats. He's had to move. His family, his mother has gotten death threats. His father's gotten death threats. His friends have gotten death threats. And um, on and on and on. You know, people are coming out and deciphering how he says stuff and what he says stuff and is there's truth to it. Not to mention it's backed up by the group notes and all the, the direct messages from other people and the group chats that they were in and the Weenies group and all that kind of stuff. And you have the nerve to get in a comment and go, yeah, I've seen his videos. They're not enough proof for me. What fucking proof do you need? A videotape of Colleen Ballinger typing away like Gabby Hanna on a computer while she's talking to minors that are 12 and 14 years old, asking them when their first period was. Or This is so weird to me that you are okay with this. You know, this is a thing I don't understand, right? Come out and say, I love Colleen. Colleen's my friend. She will always be my friend. No, I do not defend what she said. And I called up Colleen and I told her on the phone, Colleen, nothing that you have done or said is defendable. You're acting fucking weird, girl. You need to come out and own it. Okay? I am not going to leave your side. I love you. Be that friend. Nobody's asking you to leave her as a friend. People are asking you to stop defending her and protecting her. Okay? A real friend. You all have such fake friendships out there, you don't know what a real fucking friend is, okay? A real friend is somebody that once you've gone through some horrible shit in life will change your bandages, will tell you the truth when nobody fucking else will. You are not doing that. As a 40-year-old grown man begging for money on the line, okay? When you have multiple sources of income that some people will never have the opportunity for, you are arrogant to your audience, okay? And yet you're still coming out here and defending Colin Ballinger and bitching and moaning about cancel culture. Well, girl... You want to come for your audience and say, sorry, not sorry? Here to you, Todrick. Sorry, not sorry, okay? Who you've aligned yourself with, you done screwed the fucking pooch, and it has screwed you, okay? Your alignment with Colleen Ballinger is greatly affecting your career. Continue to choose to do that. You already have allegations of not paying workers, and you already have allegations of sexual inappropriate whatever -ness, okay? So does it surprise me that you don't think there's anything wrong with what Colleen Ballinger did? No, but this is the problem, right? Okay, is that there are many, many gay men, not to mention heterosexual men, heterosexual women across the world, trans men, trans women, I don't care, whoever, okay, that have, have histories that are similar to the victims that have come out and spoken. And you are minimizing those people. So when you want to sit there and your career has been built off the backs of young people, okay, young people that have similar histories possibly, and you want to minimize that. What you're telling all those millions of people out there is, I side with the abuser, not the victim. You've made your voice very, very clear. Okay? For me, at least, I will no longer be watching anything that you are in or participating in it. I will no longer be giving you my penny, my nickel, my dime, my dollar, my $5, or definitely not my $50 on your fake-ass cameo. Okay? Not that I was going to to begin with. But let's get back into this. It's funny so many people claim to be Christians. I am not one, but I did go to church long enough to know that even Jesus forgave sinners, murderers, and criminals. Yeah, they have to also, you need to, you need to read into your history about that, okay? I have my own issues with Christians too, but there are a lot of Christians that have been very, very good to me through the years, okay? A lot of people that come lead with love, they lead with heart, okay? So to generalize people as that, we're not talking about the Westboro Baptist Church, okay? And I think at 40 years old, I know when I was 40 years old, as a gay man that grew up in a church as well, I could clearly decipher, okay, between judgmental, condemning Christians and people that were loving Christians. Because there are a lot of loving Christians out there, 
okay, that love me for who I am and the skin that I am and the life that I live, okay? So for you to throw that out there is like, you know, for me, that's like the oldest excuse in the book, right? There is nothing you can say to me to make me not love, support my friend. Nobody's asking you not to love and support your friend. We're just asking you to be honest and hold her accountable. Nothing. That's not what friendship means to me. I have an uncle who went to jail for murder, an actual horrific crime. Do I condone what he did? Absolutely not. Do I still love him and allow him to sit at my table at Christmas and family gatherings? Absolutely forever and always. Do you consider the murder of victims? I mean, I don't know the story of that because you're not going into that. What you're also not going into the story of is the allegations behind Colleen Ballinger. In fact, all you said in here is, I love her, sue me. I don't agree with everything she's done. You can't even get in a, in a comment and say what she's done. You can't say, I don't agree with the allegations, okay? You, but then you come out and you say that what Adam McIntyre said in the video was not enough. So what is it? Was what he said enough and you're just okay with that? And so you're going to always love your friend forever? Are you not okay with what Adam McIntyre is alleging? And that's what you're not okay with? You're not clear on this, okay? So that's what people are having an issue with, Todrick. They're having an issue with you, okay? You. Not your friendship with Colleen. Let's make that very, very clear. Um, we are all humans, every one of us. Let's stop trying to paint people as monsters because she's absolutely not. She's an incredible human being who's done so much work for so many people, including myself. In my time of need, I've never turned my back on someone like that. Well, I'm not asking you to turn your back on that, all right? But if you want your friend to grow and change and move through this, I often talk in my videos about moving through the pain, not just moving on, because when we grieve certain situations, people in our life, pets, and also periods of our life, and trauma, when we talk about grieving those periods, it's not about moving on. I learned this from a friend of mine that lost her son, okay? And I called her up and I said, a lot of people are telling me to move on. She goes, no, we never move on. We move through the pain. We work on the pain as we move through it therapeutically. We will always forever carry the memories of with that, okay? Through our lives. Colleen Ballinger is never going to live her life not remembering what happened to her, okay? I am not seeing her move through the pain. I'm not seeing her take accountability. I'm not even seeing her address the pain, okay? I'm seeing her play with fucking rocks and having her good Judy Todger call defend her at any expense. Or am I wrong? Or am I wrong? Okay, let's get into the next one. He says, you bringing up these extreme examples is a tad dramatic. Might as well throw Jeffrey Dahmer. It goes in there. Okay. That's not the only definite, uh, grooming, definition of grooming, but I do think that's what it implies, which is why I don't like the term. It's like calling someone who sells weed a drug dealer. <laughs> okay. Well, m marijuana is a drug. Even if it's a legal drug, it's, it's a drug. And so if you're in a state where it's not legal and you're selling marijuana, <laughs> you're a drug dealer. <laughs> I'm just going to put this out there as a person that's been sober for 29 years. I'm no prude. I think we know that I believe in the decriminalization of marijuana. But in Indiana, it is not, it's not federally legal. I do have friends of mine that smoke pot that are not so sober. And they'll say things to me like, yeah, I like my dealer came by last night, which is like a 45-year-old woman that lives up the street and has six cats, right? It's the dealer of today and, and the 1980s looks a little different. But in Indiana, we still refer to it as a dealer. Somebody that... <laughs> okay, Todrick. Todrick, you... I, like, I used to think you were so smart and educated. I mean, I get where, I get where you're coming from, right? Okay, you're, you're minimizing it. I'm like, sure, yeah, but it's weed. It's legal in a lot of places. And it's, in my opinion, not the same as selling crack. Okay, well, I'm not going to get into that whole conversation with you because I'm, in the, I'm into the decriminalization of marijuana. That being said, though... Smoking marijuana, like for somebody like me that has a predisposition for addiction, actually can lead to other things. Just like somebody asking, like Colleen Ballinger asking people what their favorite sexual position could be the beginning of actually a longer sexual relationship. I'm not saying that it was, but it could be, okay? That's how a lot of long relationships of grooming start, right? That they ask questions like that. Like, when was your first period? That's those kind of questions that they ask at the beginning. I'm not sure if you're aware of that, right? So the analogy is actually not a great analogy because for me, I started drinking, started smoking weed, and I actually ended up smoking crack cocaine. So if you want to take it down that road, yeah, marijuana for me, actually, for my, my weed dealer, did lead up with crack. So I don't know what you're trying to imply here, but I don't think it's a very good analogy, okay? I'm just saying. And then the last one is, 
People always say they want celebs and influencers to take accountability. She has and it's not good enough. When did she? Can you point me to the video, the exact moment where she says, I take accountability for hurting my victims and their names are? And she says, and I'm taking accountability for this. Adam McIntyre said he would shut up and never talk about it again if she gave him a public and a private apology to him and his family. He's still talking about it, which means that's never happened. Okay, so I don't know what world you live in, if you're still living in the world of Oz, but that has not happened yet, okay? She has, and it's not good enough. No, she hasn't. Uh-uh. She, ha she hasn't. Uh, she's playing with rocks, Todrick. She's playing with rocks, girl. And trying to ride the name of Taylor Swift, who don't want her, okay? She's apologized, but people still want more. Who's she apologized to? To you? Who she's apologized to? Trish Paytas in an email? I, I was not aware that Adam McIntyre got an apology. I think that would probably be a number one trending video on YouTube if Adam McIntyre received a full apology from um, Colin Ballinger. We also live in a culture where the job of a celebrity is just to apologize while people get to run around and embellish stories. Oh, so now you're accusing them of embellishing stories with factual evidence. Okay. This is why you've never come out and taken accountability for your actions, right, Todrick? Okay. Two of her supposed victims came out with these detailed stories of how horrible she was only to find out they were straight up lying. It's fucked up. Oh. Oh, here's the James Charles um, excuse. Deaf Noodles came out with all these allegations. Let's forget the 14 and the 16 year old minor that James Charles was actually talking to. Let's focus on the lie, okay? Let's find the lie. Actually, I just read that book by Amy Tintero, Look for the Lie. It's so good. Okay, but not really the same story. That's fucked up. That Johnny kid posted things about Trisha, which were, by the way, undoubtedly wrong, but he conveniently didn't show all the things he probably... We, okay, why are you bringing up Johnny, girl, all this time later? Uh, all this time later. Okay, this is so weird to me. Johnny has not spoken about this since, and I think we've proven that he is quite the liar. Okay? He probably contributed to those conversations because we know gays like to gossip and do questionable things in their group chats when they feel safe. So now that one of the most arrogant gays is now patronizing other gays and saying that they gossip, when you were on a reality show where all of you did was sit around and fucking gossip, and you got paid to do that. You got paid to do that. Okay. Um, that makes a lot of sense. Um... And then you go on to say, and do questionable things in their group chats when they feel safe. I've def Colin Ballinger did the same thing you're coming for Johnny for. Okay, and if we're being totally honest, we probably all have. But you're not famous and no one's scrubbing through your phone or leaking your text DMs. You've done the same thing as Colin Ballinger? Is that what you're saying? Is that what you're saying? Um, hold on just a second. My cousin texted me. Okay, um... Hold on a second. So is that what you're saying? I'm going to get back into this and see if that is what you are saying in this. Because if that is what you are saying, Todd, recall, that is very problematic. Okay. So you said um, that Johnny Kid posted things about Trisha, which were, by the way, undoubtedly wrong. But he conveniently didn't show all the things he probably contributed to those conversations. Because we know gays like to gossip and do questionable things in their group chats when they feel safe. I've definitely said things to people I thought were friends that would not look good if they came out. And if we're being totally honest, we probably all have. Oh, you have, girl. Oh, okay. I wish those friends would come out and talk about you. Because I'd like to know what, you have, what, what you've said that you shouldn't have said, girl. Okay, now it's making sense why you, define, you defend Colin Ballinger. But you're not famous and no one's scrubbing through your phone or leaking your text DMs or using your clout or talking about the skeletons in your closet because we all have them. Would you be able to stand flat-footed, ten toes down, and say you've never done anything wrong? No, I don't claim to. I don't ever claim to have done anything wrong. Not to have done anything wrong, okay? But you're sitting on here saying she's apologized and taking accountability, and that's just not the case, okay? Would you want to be defined forever by only your worst moments? Absolutely not, which is why I take accountability for them when they come up. You know, would you want life for people who are disgruntled for you to be the narrators of your story? No, I'd come out and tell my own story. But she hasn't done that, right? She hasn't come out and actually addressed the story. She's come out and played with rocks and played a ukulele. Probably not, because they most likely would leave out any details that would make you look human. Well, then she needs to come out and tell her story. She needs to come out and tell the truth. She needs to come out and address the group notes. She needs to come out and address Adam McIntyre's videos. If, she, if it's, there's no truth to it, which is what you're saying now, then she needs to come out and sit down there and address word by word. You're saying it. JoJo Siwa said it. Colin Ballinger can't fucking say it. Then she needs to get in a video and she needs to address word by word. Word, okay, what they've said, the allegations, and read, read the group notes. Say there's no truth to this. I did not say this. Say it, girl. Rewrite your story. Tell us your truth. 
Again, I'm not saying she did nothing wrong, but if I'm supposed to unfollow her and never post about her again, then that's bullshit, and I'm not doing that. A lot of people would, but people are also sheep, and yeah, I'm just not. Nobody's asking you to unfollow her. People are asking you to hold her accountable. There's a difference, okay? You can be somebody's friend and tell them what they need to hear. You can be a loyal, caring friend and love that person and not betray them. I don't want anything horrible to happen to Colleen Ballinger as far as, you know, I don't, listen, I'm not going to even go there. I hope that Colleen Ballinger is surrounded by people that love her and care about her. I hope she's surrounded by a team of therapists because God knows she needs that. And I'm starting to think that Todrick Hall does too. But Todrick, you're very misleading in all this that it makes no sense, okay? Do you believe what came out and happened because you said you don't condone anything that she did wrong, but then you defend all these things and you say there's no truth to it? So what is it? I'm confused, okay? It seems to me that you don't really know what the story is. So it seems to me that you've really never actually had a story with a, a conversation with Colleen Ballinger about it because you're defending her and saying that she's addressed it when she hasn't. She's apologized enough when she hasn't apologized at all. I'm confused. But I got Cousin Fun Day. So let me know what you think in the comment section below. I love you guys, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.